Yeah, you know, I think each company wants to tout the, the relative strengths of their drug, which is understandable. And they do have different efficacy numbers. These were blinded placebo-controlled trials that are really scientifically rigorous. And so I think there's some truth to difference, the differences, and, and each company wants to highlight their own strength. I think that's fine. The way I like to present the options to patients is that I give them all the information, the efficacy, safety, all the logistics and cost, and then have them tell me what their priorities are. And then in the shared decision-making model, we'll come to a conclusion about the best therapy for that individual. And it, 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 there's no formula for which medication goes to which patient. It's really a discussion and um, it's hard to predict what patients will prioritize. Some people want the most effective drug. Even though these trials were not conducted head to head to head, they each provided a hazard ratio for risk reduction in, in relapse. And you could, and, and studies have tried to compare those risk reductions across different trials. And so there's one, that eculizumab, that appears to be higher. There's indibilizumab and cetralizumab that are a little bit lower. But then there are safety issues to consider, including um, risk of infection, opportunistic infections. And then there are logistics in every two week infusion versus in every six month infusion. And then of course costs, and costs are sometimes out of the hands of the patients. It's really what the payers are willing to provide. So I think there are a lot of factors to consider and it's not just one priority.